Next Saturday, Victorians vote in their state election. So far, publicly at least, the campaign has been largely unremarkable. The incumbent MPs up against the wannabes, jousting over the usual slogans, promises and accusations. But there's a battle underway that you're likely not aware of, and it's one with serious national implications. In a joint 60 Minutes, The Age and Sydney Morning Herald investigation, tonight we reveal the ambitions of a relatively unknown Pentecostal church, which is trying to build power within the Liberal Party. The City Builders, as it's known, is accused by former members of being more cult than church, denouncing abortion, homosexuality, same-sex marriage and transgenderism. It seems like a picture-perfect wedding. The daughter of a church pastor gazes up at her smiling groom. But there's a secret that will quickly doom the marriage of Claire Heath. Her new husband, Patrick, is gay. This is a ceremony happening after Claire's father, the pastor, has been trying to cure Patrick of his homosexuality. And if that means risking his daughter's happiness, well, so be it. I know that they don't like calling them arranged marriages, but you've got to call a spade a spade. <laughs> he knew you were gay. Yeah. To gamble with your child's life like that is disgusting. Disgusting, but apparently OK, in the City Builders Church based in Sale, Victoria. Australia is changing and not for the best. And while it might be easy to dismiss the fringe views of its leader, Pastor Brian Heath, and his flock of Pentecostal Christians, tonight you'll see why we shouldn't. This group has grand political ambitions. Its leaders have railed against Australian laws on abortion and same-sex marriage. We're not a massive church, but we have a whole lot of people involved in the political. Uh, not just one party, but many parties, and that, that's a good thing. Members of the City Builders Church have been trying to push their ultra-conservative agenda for years. They started in smaller political parties, Family First and the Nationals. There's a growing feeling in Australia that politics is broken and that our leaders no longer represent everyday people like you and I. But now they're moving to the Liberal Party, where real political power is within reach for the first time. It comes in the form of Renee Heath. She's not only another one of Brian Heath's daughters, but also a devout long-term senior member and former preacher at City Builders. And in less than a week, she's almost certain to win an upper house seat for the Liberals in the Victorian state election. And look, I don't mind what people, what stands anyone has, so long as they express it sensibly and respectfully. Although few Victorians have heard of Renee Heath, her association with city builders makes her one of the most controversial candidates in the state election, as well as a headache for her leader, Matthew Guy, who wants to be the next Premier. Respectfully, she's not expressing anything. She's not giving interviews or answering questions. We've been told the Liberal Party has told her not to speak to the media. So how do we know what she stands for? So I'm afraid I just can't answer that. Another huge thing that we're going to be... Renee Heath insists she's her own woman, not influenced by the church or her father. But this campaign, she's dodged questions about LGBTQA and reproductive rights. Renee Heath, Liberal candidate for the Eastern Region. And has kept an unusually low profile, not even turning up to the Liberals' campaign launch in Melbourne. We have been hearing about the barriers that people face in this area getting to work. What we've seen here over a prolonged period of time is an effort to infiltrate a major political party and to cloak themselves in the legitimacy of that party that's been earned over, over generations. Dr Josh Roos is a political sociologist at Deakin University. He says the stealthy rise of an ultra-conservative group like the City Builders in Australian politics is hugely alarming. The big deal here is that this is the tip of the spear of a much larger movement. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes that isn't open to the public eye. And that's an attempt to control various platforms within a major political party and to gain power over a mechanism that's capable of achieving significant change, not only politically, but economically, culturally in our country. 
but I'm in no mood to tolerate any form of extremism from the left or the right. The Liberals may only have themselves to blame for endorsing a candidate who's causing clear embarrassment. Almost unbelievably, we've been told the party didn't probe Renee Heath about her religious views when she was vetted as a candidate. Matthew, there's been a lot of controversy consistently about Renee Heath. Have you asked her about her stance on gay conversion, abortion, homosexuality? No, I haven't. Why not? I haven't um, been around the state, Nick. I've been doing plenty of other things, so uh, I haven't, uh, haven't seen it. Like his daughter, Pastor Brian Heath is an active member of the Liberal Party, a vice president of its Morwell branch. Unlike Renee, he's more open about his hardline views, as this audio recording from earlier in the year proves. I believe Amen. that the decline in the nations has been progressive. But as soon as we allowed homosexual marriage to come in, it's almost like we've gone to the next stage now of uh, yes. uh, almost a social collapse right across the Western yeah, yeah. world. So we're seeing a really significant departure from values of tolerance, values of pluralism, and values that really underpin our democracy now. Claire Heath and her former husband, Patrick McIver, agree. And it's why they've made the tough decision to publicly reveal the inner workings of the church they now call cult-like. They say they knew it as a place where conversion practices occurred, where young people were separated from their families and other alleged abuses downplayed. I had to speak out because there's no peace in silence. When you've been inside the covenant of that group and you've been privy to the things that they've said and done, you can't just come out and come to middle ground and find peace. You have to come out all the way and try to make it right. It's a big decision to put your personal story and such a raw personal story out for public consumption. I do it. I get nothing out of this. In fact, this causes a lot of discomfort for me. And I would really prefer to just move on, but I can't because I see this church still just doing the same stuff and still harming a whole new generation of young people. And I just can't, I can't say nothing. Patrick MacGyver came to the City Builders Church three hours east of Melbourne in Sale as a 15 year old in 2002. Back then, he was fleeing a life of bullying and loneliness, and the church seemed to be offering love and understanding. Our love now. When I visited Sale, this seemed like the most authentic expression of faith that a church community could have. Everyone was so close. Um, we went on fun trips together when I visited. You know, everyone was my friend. Um, I, I just felt like it was such a stark contrast to the, the life that was shaping up for me in Melbourne. Those early days were so welcoming for Patrick, he found himself pushing his own family away, preferring the company of leader Brian Heath. In my opinion, um, Brian, the pastor, deliberately groomed each of us there away from our parents. A lot of young people. Um, have been drawn away from their parents and encouraged to call him their father instead. Um, some even call him Papa now. Patrick was holding a deeply personal secret though. He was gay. Eventually, he felt comfortable enough to tell the pastor. Why did you decide to tell Brian Heath that you thought you might be gay? I really felt like Brian and this church would want to know about it and that um, they'd be able to help me with it. Um, been else. He said I needed to stop hanging around with girls and instead I needed to hang around with blokes um, and I needed to, you know, sort of stop doing creative kind of things. It wasn't the response he'd expected and it was about to get even more brutal. As a gifted musician and singer, Patrick had dreamt of a career in the arts, but Pastor Brian had different ideas. I needed to run everything by Brian. 
I said, I've been thinking of going to the Victorian College of the Arts. It's been a dream of mine. And he goes, nah, bunch of faggots. Don't go there. What did he mean by that? Well, he meant for a faggot like me. And the kind of power that he had over me, I just didn't even argue. I just nodded my head. A little piece of my heart kind of broke and I just let that dream go. The controversial City Builders Church wants to change Australia. There is power when people come together. Its leader, Brian Heath, is intent on using the political system to try to fight laws on abortion and same-sex marriage. And it's likely he'll soon have support in high places. His daughter, Renee, a senior member of the church, is almost guaranteed to win a seat in the Victorian Parliament next week. But former church member turned whistleblower, Patrick MacGyver, knows from experience how dangerous the church's ultra-conservative views are. A decade ago, when Patrick was struggling with his sexuality, Brian Heath urged him to undertake conversion practices under the guidance of a gay man who claimed he'd gone straight. Brian came and met with the guy and sussed him out with me and um, arranged... This was a gay conversion program? Yeah. And um, told me I should pay the guy a weekly fee and do some counselling with him and uh, that that was going to help. And so I did that for a year. Brian Heath also encouraged the young gay man to court his eldest daughter, Claire. Brian said, uh, so you and Claire are getting along pretty well. And I was like, yeah, we are actually. We, we've become really good friends. And he said, but you wouldn't marry her, would you? And I laughed and said, no, sorry, I, I really admire all your daughters, but no, I couldn't see myself with any of them. I went to Brian and said, I just, I feel fundamentally like I'm just wired up to be attracted to men. But Claire, in her church-born naivety, believed the match could work. In the case of Patrick and myself, Dad actually made the approach, neither of us made the approach first. Um, he suggested me to Patrick, and then after Patrick said yes to that, he suggested Patrick to me. The notion that your father set you up ultimately for marriage with a man he knew to be gay, how does that sit with you now? I've grappled with this so much because how could he do that to me? And nobody at any stage took me aside and went, girl, you're rolling the dice with this guy. Um, do you think your father saw marrying a man who was gay, who he tried to make not gay, to his daughter was part of the gay conversion process ongoing? Yes, that's my belief. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. I think, I mean, I, I can't get inside my dad's head. Um, but I think that, you know, just, just kind of listening to the the talk over the years, you hear it said that it's a spirit that needs to be cast out or that it's a mental illness. And all of this is 100% rubbish. There is nothing wrong with being gay. If this sounds jarring, at the City Builders Church, it wasn't a one-off. Like Patrick, James Dalton was 15 when he joined Brian Heath's flock. He was assigned female at birth and as a teenager was struggling with his identity. To supposedly help James, Brian Heath sent him to a conversion program. It was far from helpful. I remember just stacks of papers, workbooks, quoting Bible verses about why you shouldn't be gay, what happens when you're gay. Exorcism started around that time as well. Church are trying to remove gayness from you through exorcism. Yes. Take me through it, describe it. Sometimes it was just Brian and a couple others. Sometimes it could be up to 20 other people. 
the people around would put their hand on me. And Brian would be praying, he'd be casting out the devil that's in me. He would be not talking to me as a person or as me, as a human. He'd be talking directly to me as the devil, as Satan, telling me to get out of, of my body, that I'm evil, I'm not welcome. Um, he would start praying in tongues. Everyone around would start doing the same thing. It could get loud and boisterous. Um, and then he would go back to casting out again. He'll be even yelling, holding his hand on my head, feeling like I'm getting shoved around. Was it scary? It was terrifying. I felt hopeless. I, I felt like I was evil. James didn't realise it at the time, but now understands Brian Heath's manipulation, the worst of which led to a cruel estrangement from his own family. He told a group of us in the, in the youth group that our parents weren't our actual parents, that him and Lynn, his wife, were our God-given parents and that we were to call them mum and dad. And did you call them mum and dad? Yes. Yeah. What, what did your mum and dad think about that? They were ropeable, told us not to, told us it was wrong. Religion is about justice, and it's about wholeness, and it's about peace. And if communities uh, are causing the opposite of that, then we do need to speak out against it. Professor of Theology, Uniting Church Minister, Reverend John Flett, says it's a warning sign when a church leader has high levels of control over members' lives. I think the types of things that we should be thinking about is the importance of individual person in charismatic ministry. So is there one source of authority? That's uh, a question. What forms of accountability are in place regarding the behaviours or non-behaviours? So uh, are there any checks and balances on any of that type of power? Brian Heath's daughter, Claire, says her father's dominance at City Builders was all-consuming and nothing was allowed to interfere with his work for God. Not even Claire's disclosure of a creepy encounter with another pastor from an affiliated church. Just to be clear, this for the time was your pastor and he's massaging you in his basement with your top off? Yes. <laughs> For most of her life, Claire Heath was a loyal servant of the City Builders Church, run by her father, Brian. She left it, though, in the years after he knowingly encouraged her to marry Patrick MacGyver, who was gay. But that wasn't the only time her father's actions had troubled her. When Claire was 18, she says he sent her to a fellow pastor, curiously because he'd offered to help treat a shoulder injury. I am on a massage table um, for hours off um, and he's massaging my back. The thing that was the most concerning is in these moments of just extreme distress, he would say things like, wow, you're just so broken beyond repair. Have you ever considered just ending it? Have you ever considered ending it? And then he would talk about how Women fail at suicide attempts so much more than men do because men choose more reliable methods. Uh, um, and then he'd talk about what those more reliable methods were. Just to be clear, this for the time was your pastor and he's massaging you in his basement with your top off? Yes. Did your father, Brian Heath, know that you were in another pastor's basement getting massaged like that? Yeah, he'd, he'd arranged it. Even more surprising was the way Claire says her own father reacted when she complained about her treatment. Distressingly, I kept him apprised of what was going on and he was uh, constantly telling me, you know, 
you got to fix this, you got to fix this. To his devotees, Pastor Brian Heath is an inspiration. Tongues is going to be a force in the church. But he takes his inspiration from this man. Anyone willing to lay down your life? Let's go take the city. Let's go change our nation. Let the kingdoms of the world become the kingdom of our Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. Arise! Jonathan David, who likes to be known as Papa, is a Malaysian preacher. Somebody shout Jesus. And the international head of a network of ultra-conservative Pentecostal churches called Isaac. City builders, you must rise yes. and take into your hands what God has given to you. Like Brian Heath, David shares similar hateful views on issues like homosexuality and abortion. The spirit of death will be stopped at his feet. Mm. Thousands of babies are being aborted each year. He will save a whole generation. He's also determined to gain political power. If God wants to bring the whole nation of Australia around, the next three terms of election in this nation are very crucial because it's going to chart the course for the end time. Tell me about Jonathan David. Uh, Jonathan David is the presiding apostle of the Isaac Network. We regarded him as Papa. He was a very scary man. Whatever he said, we were to do. Like, he didn't make suggestions, he gave instructions, and we followed them. When Patrick MacGyver was still a member of the City Builders, he was encouraged to pursue his interest in politics and join the National Party. When he rose to local branch president and deputy mayor, he says he was given secret orders by Jonathan David and Brian Heath. These leaked emails from 2015 show how they plan to exert long-term political influence. In this one, David tells Patrick to stay in the National Party. Be the agent of change from within and earn the respect from the upper level of the senior leadership of the National Party. You can leave the party any time when we assure our objectives are not going to be met. Or stay true to the end. You have time on your side. You are still young. Later, in the same email, he makes his views on homosexuality clear. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. These instructions were embraced by Brian Heath, a rallying cry to his leadership team. The word from Papa, let's go for it plenty to be done. Seems pretty clear that from the very top in Malaysia, there was an effort to seek political influence in Australia. And not just in the Nationals, in the Liberals, in Family First. Um, there were other pastors in Jonathan David's Isaac network on other boards and state councils in other parties that he was directing as well. Directing from Malaysia? From Malaysia. It smells a bit like foreign influence. Yeah, and he then directs these groups on how to engage politically. Patrick admits to following orders. He says he brought church members into the party at Brian Heath's behest and told them how to vote. And that was where the conversation started heading between Brian and others that started joining the Nationals with me was here's an opportunity for us to gain real influence and real power in the political space. Did you go and get more members? Yeah, I brought in, I brought in a number of members from my church and from affiliated churches as well. Were they genuine political members? Would they have joined of their own accord? No. Uh, the Liberal Party are now facing significant challenges in terms of the composition of their membership. Dr Josh Roos from Deakin University warns political parties need to be wary. And you've got highly organised, highly politicised and well-funded groups now seeking to basically uh, build voting blocks within to, to actually shape and, and to alter the composition of who's elected for parliament. It's why many are concerned about how Brian Heath's daughter Renee is dodging scrutiny in the lead-up to next weekend's election. Her ongoing allegiance to city builders, however, is clear. 
to come together as one voice. In private chat logs, she's endorsed his mission to penetrate and revolutionise the lives of leaders in every domain. I love everything I've read so far. Dominion in every domain, yeah! Renee was at a major Jonathan David-led Isaac Network conference in 2019 and was online last year, attending Jonathan David's sermon. The reason why we do things like this is because it is an urgent time. Renee also remains a shareholder of a city builder's company. In a democracy, there's of course no problem with religious candidates seeking to gain power. But like anyone entering politics, they should also welcome scrutiny. We've made multiple requests to interview Renee Heath and her father, Pastor Brian Heath, about what role, if any, their church played in her decision to run. Pastor Brian initially invited us here to attend a service, only to cancel the invitation and the service. For her part, Renee has declined all interview requests. What we do need to know is where political candidates stand on their views across the spectrum. You know, a failure to declare that really does render that, uh, that particular candidate or that particular party um, a potential danger to democracy. And if this is the pattern and the direction in which the Liberal Party are going, then we, we really do see a significant shift in their, in their trajectory from a, uh, a party based on values of tolerance, based on values of you know, respect for others, which they've historically held, uh, to a party that's now run by the extreme fringe. Patrick McIver, who knew Renee Heath very well, says he doesn't believe her tilted politics is unconnected to her church. Renee Heath says, I'm my own person. I'm not an agent of the City Builders Church or my father. Do you believe her? Bullshit. Why? Because I grew up in this place with Renee and we were alongside each other in all of the training. We were raised to be arrows in Brian Heath's quiver, armour bearers for him. We were raised and trained to be weapons that he could fire at other people. All of us exist within that church for somebody else's purpose, not our own. And whose purpose is that? Brian's purpose, Jonathan David's purpose. Today, Claire and Patrick are amicably separated. They left City Builders in 2016, after Claire became pregnant, deciding they couldn't raise a child in the church environment. Yes, my belief is that it's a cult, and whew, <laughs> saying that out loud is, is, is difficult. James Dalton is worried for the future and wants Australians to know the risks. They won't stop at this level. They will keep going up and up and their ultimate goal is to make the wider community just like the cult itself. Holding their beliefs on not just religion but homosexuality, transgender, abortion, marriage, everything. And that is just absolutely terrifying to me. Why does it scare you so? We're progressing as a country so slowly, but we're progressing. I don't want to see they go backwards. And if they've gotten this far, who's to say how far they're going to go? Yesterday, clearly worried about the impact of this story, the Victorian opposition leader, Matthew Guy, finally saw the light about his candidate, Renee Heath. It's too late to take her off the ballot paper for next Saturday's election, meaning she's almost sure to be elected to Parliament. But Guy announced Renee Heath won't be allowed to sit in the Liberal Party room. It's a small nod to common sense, but you really have to wonder why it takes exposure on 60 Minutes for the Liberal Party to take action. Now, of course, if this story raises issues and you need to speak with someone, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.